Welcome back. This is week five of our six week program in starting your small business. Now this one's a little bit different. I'm going to be tossing it over to my friend and colleague here, Dave, and he's going to run the discussion about branding. Yeah. And that's because you are our, the in-house marketing guru. Yeah, there you go. So we're going to like do our yoga um, and, that's right. and learn from the guru here. As Steve mentioned, my background in marketing. So we're going to be talking about the, the, formation of your brand and kind of what are the things that you need to consider at the early stages um, as you build towards you know a marketing plan and we wanted to start with going back to the idea and as this is starting to get into the final stage of analysis and action and execution on hey making decisions this is the brand this is the name these are you know design elements color schemes all kinds of things that we'll go over today and kind of talk about um, you know, things to consider. So I guess one of the big questions I have is, so does it matter? I mean, why? Why does it matter what my brand is? I got a great product. I'm going to sell you chewing gum statues. I'm yep. going to sell you something. And, and why does it really matter what my brand is? What does brand convey? And, and, and what, why would I care? Uh, well, really, it's the foundation of your company. It's what people are going to remember at first glance. And it's some of the things to kind of consider, you know, that I have on the slide here is, you know, it, it needs to be something that's going to be easily remembered once, you know, a, a customer or a prospect interacts with your business. It's kind of the foundation from which all of your messaging, um, you know, and that gets further down into marketing, the, the foundation of all of that message to the customer. It's where it starts is the brand. And, and brand is logo and motto and, and colors. Colors, you know, the name, the, there's all kinds of things. And we'll get into some of those a little bit too. But yeah, it, it is all those things because all of them, um, you know, there's something immediately, you know, that, oh, that's blue, you know, and, and that has a, has a meaning. But there's all kinds of psychology that goes into the branding that affects things like color choices, even things like fonts that are small, seemingly, but they have impact. And there's trends that you can follow and watch if you're trying to position your company a certain way, depending on, again, who you're going after. It's funny that you, we talk about this and, and you're going to have McDonald's here on this slide. So yes. you think golden arches, the first thing you see, you see golden arches, you think McDonald's. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but I think immediately Big Mac. I love my Big Macs. Yeah. Um, but I have a friend who had been in marketing for McDonald's and I remember we were, we were all hanging out uh, one evening having some drinks and we were watching the TV at, at the bar and this person got a little concerned because there was a commercial on that used their colors. Mm. <laughs> it was like, and, and it was a competitor. You're using yeah. our colors. And, yes. <laughs> and it was, it was kind of that competitive nature about marketing. So, so this conveys a lot. So in this particular slide, what, what are you trying to tell us with this slide? What's this interesting story? So, you know, I, I, I have the bullet here about how, how brand can significantly impact things like pricing, customer perception, trust, things like that. But what I found is interesting, a little study that looked at real estate values. And this report is actually out of the UK. Um, so some of the companies there you might not immediately recognize. Um, but basically the, the trend was the brand has a significant impact on the real estate values of the homes around it. McDonald's being, you know, a, a little bit lower cost of a brand, which is fine. You know, the, there's nothing wrong with that as a position, but the impacts you need to consider. McDonald's has a price and a value perception uh, that, as the study showed, impacted not only obviously the customers, but the real estate around it. So it just points to how important branding is. And, and that actually kind of comes into play even here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, but other places around the country, as we see what are perceived as low value, uh, low price businesses coming into the community, sometimes the community inherently and instinctually understands this. And so when a Dollar General is coming in, you might see some resistance to this low price, uh, low price store coming into the community because of perception that it's gonna lower their property values in the community. And so maybe if something else is coming with a bigger name, it's gonna increase the property values. And so you look at it in that regard as well. So that's, that's a very interesting perspective. And from our side of it, I guess that, that's telling me that if I have a good brand, I can understand that I might have a positive impact on my community simply by being there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is where, again, and I'll kind of touch on it at the end, but if you're gonna be more of a brick and mortar business, 
then you can think about these things and the impact where if you're strictly online, you know, you'll need to consider other factors that we'll go over kind of in the, the coming slides. There's kind of two, two routes that you can take and there's not really a wrong, there's not necessarily a wrong way to do it depending on, again, the customers you're trying to target. The first one being, okay, you could be very upfront with, you know, what you are, Burger King, Lyft, you know, like, yeah, I need a Lyft. All right, it's pretty uh, DoorDash. Again, it's not quite as in your face as Burger King, but it's pretty, as soon as you interact with DoorDash once, there's, oh, okay. And they're dashing to your door, right? right? It's so, fast. So yeah. Lyft, Lyft's purpose is to do what? Uh, they're trying to give you a ride. <laughs> give, give you a Lyft, right? Yeah. So, but Uber was there first. Mm -hmm. Right. Does that convey what Uber does? Uber's brand, you're saying? Yeah. Does their name convey it? or I, Not not initially, but I mean, it does point to speed. And, and that's, again, kind of, you know, different, you know, speed is going to look more at the value um, where Lyft is more in the action. And this is why I find really interesting about what you're putting here, you know, that's easily remembered. Uber is easily remembered in part because it's not English, it's German. Indeed. You know, so uh, Covation, the reason I asked you that about us yeah, is yeah. I've heard mixed mixed conversations about it. Some people do not like Covation because Covation, what is it? It's a made up word. What does it really mean? Now I can tell you it's collaboration, co-working and innovation. And we put those together to come up with Covation Center. Um, and some people don't like that because it's hard to understand what that means. Others tell me once I've heard it, I can't forget it. Indeed. Right. And I think that's the Uber thing that you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, that, that points to, you know, Uber and some of the other ones down there, you know, like, like Nike, it, that doesn't immediately tell you what they do, but Nike is the Greek goddess of victory. Ooh, really? Yes. So I did not know that. Well, there you go. So that, that points to a kind of two strategies that you can take. One is the very upfront, Hey, this is what I do. Um, you know, and you're clearly either conveying, um, kind of the product where you're Lyft Burger King or a little bit more of the value Uber in terms of speed or DoorDash, you know, like th there's no food there, but it's more in the action of we're getting food to your door in a dash <laughs> quickly. Now there are some others that maybe don't convey things in a way that makes sense. Uh, singular with a C mm -hmm. in the cell phone service. I have no idea what that was intended to be. They're AT&T now, right? Yes, sure. Uh, another one was Verizon. V-E-R-I-Z. Like, I remember when they came out, people were like, what the heck is a Verizon anyway? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> but we know them now. They're ubiquitous. And when it comes to DSL, really slow. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the name can really carry a lot. Uh, Indeed. And that, that's why, again, I, I'll point to, you know, the idea of taking one of these two routes. You know, th there are some companies that do take the kind of, um, you know, kind of just seemingly random or, or you know, th their customers don't have any idea kind of what they're, what they're aiming at. And that's why I tend to stay away from that, uh, that method. <laughs> so how do we translate this sort of thing as, as we have this conversation, our name means something, the name recognition is going to mean something. People will, you know, see Covation Center and now hopefully remember Covation Center. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that translate into other things that we need to do to convey who we are? I mean, you have here online assets. What are we looking for? Uh, so, so you're looking to kind of capture, you know, all of the uh, online real estate, so to speak, that's going to be related to your brand. Um, and there are a couple things to, to think about. And, and again, I, I, I touch on a little bit. The importance of some of these things, all of these aspects is somewhat dependent on your business model. If you're going to be all online, then you better go out and really grab all of the assets surrounding your brand name to go back to our previous slide. Once you make that decision, go grab all the online assets. You know, the domain names, kind of the first part. Covationcenter.org, .net, .com, mm -hmm. uh, anything Covation center -y, we've grabbed. Right, right. Because you want to make sure that if someone remembers Covation Center, but doesn't remember, or wait, is it .com? It's kind of a, it's a nonprofit, so is it .org? I don't remember. That points to the importance of go and grab all of them. You know, domains are usually $15 a year. <laughs> so go ahead and grab them. You know, there's very minimal cost to protecting, you know, your brand. Um, we'll get into a little bit, the, the damage that can be done if you don't protect your brand with a, with a recent example. But you know, so again, to just quick go through it, you're looking at domain name, 
uh, or names. Um, and, and I have on there some of the things to think about in terms of do you want dot com? There, there's a, been a, a lot of um, domains added that have gone away from the traditional dot com, dot net, dot orgs um, that might work for your business. You know, there's dot photography, things like that. If that's an interest of yours or centered around your business, it might make sense. It gives you that branding where you can have a unique name. And if you're centered on online, you know, I could do Dave Larson dot photography and that would immediately kind of indicate to anyone that visits what my company or organization is all about. I may actually have Steve Brady dot photography <laughs> and Steve Brady photography dot com. So <laughs> well, there you go. So yeah, we're touching on some interests of Steve, but that's, you know, friends of Rose Valley Lake dot org. I've got that one too. <laughs> okay. So there you go. So visit Steve online basically. Um, but yeah, shameless so, plug. <laughs> indeed. He takes great photos. Well, but, thank you. That's, but um, yeah, so the, you know that and then social media handles, they're free. So, you know, in this, again, depending on the importance of the online, consider this as you're, as you're creating your brand name, are the URLs available? Are the social media handles available if I'm going to be an online first business? Now, one of the things that, that I've done, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm really not trying to do a shameless plug, but I <laughs> am SCM professor pretty much everywhere. Uh, so if you look on Twitter or on various and sundry sources, you'll see SCM Professor is me. And so when it came time to look at some of these new upstarts in social media that have since been shut down, uh, I went and created an account not to use it, not to do anything, but to protect SCM mm -hmm. Professor because I don't need somebody posting things with that name when people go, well, everywhere else it's Steve Brady. And so we go and we get covationcenter.org, we get Covation Center on Instagram, we have Covation Center on Twitter. Uh, and so we're doing that in a sense, as you say, to protect, yeah. to protect our brand against somebody who might come in and do something with it. It allows you flexibility. Remember, we talked about whether you should grab all the social media handles or not if you're only going to be active, say, on Instagram or Twitter. It takes so little time and there's no cost, you know, as, as we talked. Go grab them all. It's worth it to protect your brand because protecting the brand is the story behind your business. Now we've had some other conversations that we can actually share in some further video series mm, about yeah. ways people could pretend to be your brand with creative typing. And yes. so we can type that conversation some other time. Anything else you want to highlight on, on online assets? No, I, I think these these are kind of the initial steps that are a part of the naming. You know, if you go pick a name and then find out, oh, someone else already has that name, you know, online, then again, depending on the importance of the online world, uh, you may need to reconsider. Okay. Now, so then the next piece is, and I mentioned the golden arches earlier. Yeah. Yep. You know, for us now that's built into our head and the golden sure. arches actually are an M mm -hmm. to match McDonald, yep. right? Um, how important is the de design element? How we look at this thing in terms of the design itself? Yeah, well, the, there's been numerous studies kind of, and this is geared into psychology, on, you know, colors effects on people. You know, and for some of you that may be popular on DIY, you know, and things like that, you know, certain colors convey a certain feeling or a certain mood. Um, and uh, a Marketo study, who is a, a very popular uh, marketing technology company, kind of outlined some of you know the, the colors and, and what they you know the meaning behind them blue being you know trustworthy um, and as part of their study they looked at the top 100 brands based on some surveys that they did and 33 of the top 100 had blue in their logo um, and the curvation center correct <laughs> correct so it, it, it's you, you'll see this often in larger corporations because it's a part of that trust factor and building that trust uh, which is you know important you know, when you're looking at, hey, how do I build a relationship with my customers? And again, this is based off of, you know, psychological studies and you can follow brands and what they're trying to convey um, and adapt some of these things to the creation of your brand to figure out, hey, we, you know, to, to help make some of these decisions past, hey, I like this font or hey, I don't like this font. Um, you'll see a lot of higher end brands that use what's called a serif font. Basically, it's you know, the, the caps on the bottom and the top of, of the letters. And, the little and, thingies that stick out. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I have some examples. So you kind of see what I'm talking about in terms of, you know, higher end brands where, where they're trying to position themselves as more luxury um, for whatever reason, you know, the, and this is all based on, you know, studies of, of that are steeped in psychology 
and how they play a part in marketing and brand creation. Another quick one for you, Arby's thing I read, roast beef. RB. RB, yeah. They're serving up roast beef. We've got the meat. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but it, it's an idea of they took their core product and kind of created a brand name around it. So so what are these? Well, first off, what are the four P's that I hold so close and so dear? <laughs> and then what are the questions that we should be thinking about as we move forward? Well, four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. Um, and these are all kind of springboards that, you know, at, at the at the you know, stage of creating a brand, we don't have to answer all these questions right away, but in this brand formation process, you want to think about and, and answer some of these questions because that will, you know, change how you approach, you know, the, your brand name and fonts and colors and all those kind of little details we talked about, but that are important. Thank you for, for this. This has been a great discussion about the importance of brand and the things to think about as we put our brand together. This is, week five and next week we wrap this up this six week series of starting your business really kind of going have you answered all these questions do you still feel like starting a business is a good idea well what do you really have to do next to take those steps to get this business moving forward for you hang on for week six because we're going to address that and the best way to know when we're ready to get you into week six is to click the subscribe button below, hit that bell so that you will be notified when we're ready to talk to you about this. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this video and you like the series that we're doing. Thanks and we look forward to talking with you next week. Yep, see you then.